Hey, my little churros, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So today I am going to be doing an updated thumbnail tutorial. I think the last thumbnail tutorial I did was six months ago, I want to say. Um, and I've gotten a few requests to do an updated one, and I've also really wanted to do an updated one um, because I feel like my thumbnails have definitely really improved, and I definitely want to show you guys how I make them. But yeah, with that said, um, definitely comment down below if you have any questions about any of the things that I show in this tutorial, and definitely comment any other tutorial ideas that you have because I definitely um, need some tutorial ideas. But yeah, with that said, I hope you guys enjoy today's video. Okay, that's true. So before we get on to the like main tutorial, I just wanted to say a few basics about my thumbnails. So I use Photo P, uh, Photo P? I think it's Photo P, but it may be Photo Photopea um, to make my thumbnails and I use um, Blender 2.79 to make my GFXs. If you do not know how to make a GFX, you can obviously commission someone or I will link some videos in the description of free GFXs that other content creators have made for people to use for their thumbnails. And yeah, so basically you just wanna go on to photopea.com and you want to um, switch the aspect ratio to um, 1920 by 1080 and you can name it I already have it named thumbnail tutorial and then you want to switch the background from white to transparent um, and then click create so it should look like this once you click create and then you just want to find the background that you have want to use for your thumbnails so I already have a background pre-made by I'll put his channel on the screen right now but if you do not have a background you can obviously make one or you can find one on Google so basically what you want to do is you just want to go on Google and you can search for whatever um, type of background you want so if your channel is like dark academia themed you can search for dark academia background but normally what i like to do is search as aesthetic pink anime scen scenery and then i like to go to images and then you can just find one that you like um i normally like to go for like a kind of floral ish spring vibey type of one but um you can obviously do whichever one you want. Um, I'm just gonna do this one. So you can just right click, copy image, and then you wanna go back onto Photo P. And depending on which type of computer you're on, it's either Control Z, Control V or Command V to paste. But after you paste it, it your background will be kind of small. So you just wanna go on this little, I think it's a cursor icon and click transform controls and then you can just make it bigger but like i said i already have a background pre-made so i'm just gonna go ahead and load that on to my thumbnail okay little trios so i have my background loaded on and then for the gfx um normally i like to make my gfx on blender and then i like to send it to my phone and filter it on polar on my phone there also is polar for computers but i like to use polar on my phone just because it has all my pre-saved filters and stuff but then what normally what i like to do for my gfx is in, is one time i'll put it on one side and the other time i'll put it on the other side i will edit this in a way so that, that makes sense but basically on my last video my gfx was here so i'm going to put it here this time um, i did get inspired by a youtuber to do this i'll put her channel on the screen but yeah i'm going to go ahead and load on on my gfx okay so i have loaded on my gfx um it's just a basic gfx with a hammer because this is like a tutorial so okay little this is editing sumi here and i just want to come on and say something it doesn't really relate to the video but it relates to the editing of today's video so basically for some reason my final cut pro which is what i used to edit is glitching for some reason and i'll put a picture on what it looks like but emojis are like glitching for some reason so i just wanted to come on here and say i'm sorry if i don't use like emojis in my text um but yeah this is super random but yeah i just wanted to let you guys know and yeah i hope you guys enjoy the rest of today's video so then normally what i like to do is i like to double click on the layer so just double click click inner glow um and then you can just bring it up i normally like to do this because it usually leaves like a black line and i normally like to do this so that the black line like goes away um if that makes any sense but then you can just add a stroke i already have like a pre-save style that i like to use for my gfx's but basically you can just add a stroke and if you want to add a double stroke just click the plus and then click on the little color that you want um and then you can just bring it up um like i said i already have a pre-saved one so i'm just gonna go ahead and load that onto my gfx okay so i have loaded on loaded 
loaded again i literally do not know if loaded is a word but um so i um added on my little outline i really love the look the look of this outline so now what i like to do is add some overlays i like to add overlays before and after i add on the text it honestly depends on what overlay i am adding so like some of the mini overlays that i like to add like the rainbow and the flowers and stuff i like to add that after i add the text but some of the bigger ones like this little animal effect I'll put it on the screen and this little like recording overlay I like to add before I add the text on so I'm just gonna go ahead and load those overlays on I will link a few videos in the description of videos with a bunch of overlays that I normally like to get my overlays from but yeah okay Doctor, so I have loaded in the overlays they're just kind of like the basic overlays that I like to have on my thumbnails but now I'm gonna go ahead and add on the text so honestly with text um, I just like to experiment with different styles Obviously, you just want to find the style that works best for you, but I'm just going to give you guys like a mini tutorial on how I normally like to do my texts. So first, you just want to click on the text icon and then type in your text. So for this, it's going to be how I, and then you just want to double click on it and then size and you can make it bigger. So I'm just going to make it 250. Mm, I'm just going to make it maybe 300. And then you just want to center it wherever you want. And then you can just change the font um basically um I, i'll add a little sec i'll add a little portion right now on how you add fonts onto photo p okay Latrio, so this is just a little portion on how to add fonts onto photo p so basically you just want to find your font on the font.com and you want to download it again i will link a video in the description with a bunch of fonts that I love to use. And yeah, so basically I just found a random font on devot.com and you just wanna download it and then open up the font file and I'll be right back after I do that. And then you just wanna go back onto Photo P and click on your finder. Again, I'm not really sure what a finder is called on PC, but on Mac it's called a finder. And then you just wanna find the font TTF file and you just wanna drag it on. And then it should say font name and then loaded. And basically that's how you do it. And but yeah okay so um basically once you have your fonts all loaded in you just want to click on the font that you want um i'm not really sure what i'm gonna do for this but um i'm just gonna use a font wicked mouse i will link a video in the description of a video that i made with all the fonts that i like to use so definitely go check that out if you want font suggest font suggestions but yeah then you just want to double click on the um font layer and you can just um adjust it to your liking so you can just make the color whatever you want um and normally what i like to do is click bevel and emboss and contour and you can just um adjust um the colors and stuff normally i like to make it a little bit darker than what the color of the text is and you can obviously adjust the size and the amount of soften amount and the depth um, honestly just adjust it to your liking and then I normally like to add a stroke um, sometimes what I like to do is I like to click on the blue and make it a lot darker like that and then I like to click another stroke and make it white and then I like to bring it up and I think that gives it like a really cool effect but yeah, you can also add a drop shadow, um, outer glow, pattern, gradient. Um, you can add a lot of different things. So just adjust your text to your liking and I will get back to you guys once I finish up my text. Okay, little trios. So I finished adding my text. Um, I don't 
don't love it. I don't love the font choices. I may go ahead and switch them later, but I think for now I like it. So basically, um, what I normally like to do for my thumbnails, which I forgot how forgot to add before I added, added the text, um, and something that a lot of you guys have asked me questions on lately is the little circle I add in my thumbnails. I will put a picture on the screen so you guys know what I'm talking about. But basically, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So basically, what I like to do when I do that is you just want to open another tab and search pixlr.com slash e and you just want to click create new and make it um 1080 by 1080 and then just click create and then um basically you just want to load in whatever you want in the little circle so for this it is going to be on uh, one of my previous thumbnails so i'm going to go ahead and load one of those in and then i'll get back to you Okay, so once you add in whatever you want to be in the little circle portion of your thumbnail is you want to click on the scissors icon and click circle and then you just want to drag your cursor on whatever you want. So I'm thinking maybe that and then you can just adjust it to your liking. Um, I honestly don't love that. I think I'm going to retry, but yeah, I'm, I will get back to you guys once I finish doing this. Okay guys, so I finished um, doing the circle. Um, I honestly like how it looks now, but now what I think I may do, I don't usually do this, but I think I may go ahead and blur it a tiny bit. Um, yeah, I think just like a tiny, tiny bit. Um, but then after you do that, you just wanna go to file. Um, file, save as PNG, and then you can just name it. And then you just wanna go back onto Photo P and you can load that in. Basically what you do is you just want to go out of full screen, go to your finder, um, and then you just wanna load it in. And then you can just add an outline to it and stuff. So I'm just gonna go ahead and adjust it really quickly. And yeah. Okay, not true. So I went ahead and went ahead and added my circle. And then something else that I forgot to add is I normally like to add a border uh, around my thumbnails. I'm just going to go ahead and load that in super quickly. Okay, so now that I have my border loaded in, it, it the default color is neon green, which I really do not like. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is double click, and then I'm just going to go to my pre-save styles and add on one that I already saved, but basically you can just adjust it to your liking. Um, and then I think I'm going to put it above that. Um, yeah. Okay, so now basically what I like to do after I add on my text and any of my basic overlays, I like to add on the more complex, I guess, overlays, which includes like the little rainbow I add on my thumbnails, like arrows, hearts, all that sort of stuff. So I'm just going to speed this process up, but basically you just want to add on any extra overlays to your thumbnail that are not, is not already added, and yeah. Okay, little trio, so I think I finished adding in all my overlays and I actually love the way this thumbnail looks. So basically when I am done um, with my like text and overlays and all that, normally what I like to do is export it. So you just wanna go to file, export as, PNG, and then just click save. And then what I started doing is adding like a little text on my avatar saying like exciting, highly requested, um, stuff like that so I'm just gonna go ahead and load my thumbnail onto Pixlr and then I will show you guys how I add that text okay little true so once you load your thumbnail on to Pixlr e basically what I like to do is just click the text icon and then it's pretty basic I just like to write it in so this is gonna say updated 2022 and then basically I just like to resize it and I just like to do it as basic as possible 
um, normally I like to curve it um, so that it kind of goes around the avatar more smoothly, if that makes sense. And I also like to it italicize it um and then the last thing i like to do is just add on a basic stroke i normally like to make it purple but you can honestly make it whatever um and then i just like to bring the size up um i think i'm gonna bring this color a bit darker and then yeah that's basic oops that's basically how i make my thumbnails Okay, my little churros, that is going to end today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. If you made it all the way to this point, comment this emoji that I opened on the screen so I know you stayed all the way to the, all the, way to the end. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all so much. Bye!